In our last lesson, we talked about the speed of sound. Today, we want to explore the speed of light. I want to go back though a few lessons. We learned about the speed of a wave moving through a guitar string. And we found that when we made the tension higher, the wave got faster, and we made the string more dense, the wave got slower. Then when we looked at sound, we realized it traveled best through solids, where the particles were close together, and it traveled worst when it was traveling through gases, where the particles were far apart. We had a formula to calculate the speed of sound at different temperatures when it's moving through air. Today, like I said, we want to focus on light waves. We looked at lightning striking, and we saw it strike somewhere in Lawrence, Kansas, and we saw the lightning, the light from the lightning spread out, and the sound from the thunder spread out. We know that the lightning travels much, much, much faster than the sound. But what I want you to realize is it's not instantaneous. It does take some time for the light to go from one place to another. It is not instantaneous. Light has a finite speed. I want to remind you that light is produced when we oscillate charges, when we accelerate the charges, we disturb the electric and magnetic field around the charge, and the propagation of that disturbance is what we call light. It is a disturbance in the electric and magnetic fields. So your field is normally looking something like this, and when we move it, those field lines are gonna get disturbed. So if we're looking at this line in particular, and we move our charge, that disturbance is going to propagate through space and time much quicker than what you're seeing here. But this is the essence of the propagation of the wave. All right, so it looks something like that. And in space, light travels faster than any other object or any other wave through any other material. So the speed of light is the cosmic speed limit. Nothing will ever get faster than the speed of light through outer space. The speed of light through outer space is 3 e to the 8th. We can rewrite that 300 e to the 6th, and that is 300 million meters per second. So the speed of light, fastest speed, 300 million meters in one second. This is such a special speed that it often will be designated with the letter C, a small c. Whenever you see small c in an equation, it's probably referring to the speed of light in outer space. Why is light so fast in outer space? Light does not require a material to carry it. It's being carried by an electric and magnetic field. In fact, materials are just going to slow the light down. So it travels best where there are no materials, and that would be the vacuum of space. How fast does it travel? Well, if we look at the distance between the Earth and the Moon, we know that they are 3.8 e to the 8th meters apart, and light is traveling at about 3 e to the 8th meters per second. So it could traverse the distance between the Earth and the Moon in about one second. So if that was a beam of light, that's how long it takes to travel between the Moon and the Earth. All right, speed of light, fastest ever, fastest speed ever. Okay, so I'd like you to figure out how long it's gonna take light to travel from the sun to each of the major bodies in our solar system. Okay, so if you want, you can make a chart that looks similar to this. You're going to go back to the formula, velocity equals distance over time. For velocity, you're going to use 3 e to the 8th. And for the distance, you're going to look, look them up on your planetary reference sheet. Some of these may come out to be really large numbers, 
If they are a large number of seconds, change them into minutes or hours so that, so that they are easier to communicate. All right? I want you to get a sense of how big our solar system is based on how long it takes light to travel from different places. We would like to think that the light instantaneously reaches Neptune or the other bodies, but you will see it does require a significant travel time. Okay, I'd then like you to try figuring out how long it takes light to travel to the Earth from other objects, not in our solar system per se, but anywhere in our universe. So if you make a chart that looks like this, I would like you to figure out how long it takes light to travel from these other objects. Okay, so we have a planet even farther out than Eris. It's called Sedna. The distance is given there, and I'd like you to calculate how much time it takes the light to travel to the Earth. We have Alpha Centauri, which is the closest star to the sun. How long does it take light to travel from Alpha Centauri to our home planet? Here is our distance. I'd like you to calculate the time. Okay, the Orion Nebula. The Orion Nebula, you can do that one um, based on the distance I give you here. The thing that's special about the Orion Nebula is it is a birthplace of new stars. So when you calculate this out, we're figuring out how long ago the light from these new stars left on its journey toward the Earth. All right, so calculate that out. You're going to get a value of about 1,342 years, so make sure you understand what this means. These stars that look like they are being born right now we're actually looking like that, not today when we see them, but we're actually seeing them as they looked over a thousand years ago. That light that is reaching us today has been traveling for over a thousand years. You are literally looking back in time at how these objects used to look. So the Crab Nebula was a star that exploded, and we saw it explode here on Earth in the year 1054. When did it actually explode? Figure out how long it took the light to reach us, okay, from that original star, if it is 6.1 e to the 19th meters away. You should get an answer of almost 6,500 years. So when we saw this star explode back in 1054, realize the actual explosion had taken place almost 7,000 years before that. The Andromeda galaxy is special because it's the closest galaxy to our own. When we view it, and this is an actual picture with a telescope, again, we are looking back in time. We are not seeing it as it looks today. We are seeing it as it looked when the light left. Okay, so the light that is reaching us today left the Andromeda galaxy 2.5 million years ago. Okay, so it took 2.5 million years to travel from the galaxy to the Earth. You're literally seeing back in time 2.5 million years. And then some of the farthest objects away are quasars. And when you figure out how long ago they gave off their light, it's almost 2.4 billion years ago or farther, depending on which quasar you're looking at. Okay, I want you to realize that all the problems we've done so far, we've assumed that the light was traveling through space. And that is not always the case. Sometimes light might be traveling through water or glass, or diamond, and the light will slow down when it's in these other materials. So you have a chart that looks like this, and if you wanted to find the speed of light through glass, you take the speed of light in outer space, and you divide by this number, it's called the index of refraction. It will become more important later in the year when we look at what refraction actually talks about. 
Okay, so index of refraction will let you figure out the speed of light when the light is traveling through a material different from outer space. Remember, light always slows down when it goes from outer space into anything else.